the time for silence is over. Without any evidence to support it. There is not a scintilla of evidence that this is true. I have not seen the proof. Have we seen proof of voter fraud at this point? I have not seen the proof. Have you seen any evidence of fraud occurring in your state? Without any evidence to support it. I have not seen the proof. And the ballots are out of control. I have not seen the proof. The only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. Remember that. Get rid of the ballots. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Remember that. Get rid of the ballots. Remember that. Get rid of the ballots. Remember that. Get rid of the ballots. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. There is not a scintilla of evidence that this is true. I have not seen the proof. Get rid of the ballots. Get rid of the ballots. Get rid of the ballots. You'll never know who the winner is, but the winner's going to be me. Do you commit to making sure that there's a no, peaceful we wanna, transfer? Of the we want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. You'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. You'll never know who the winner is, but the winner's going to be me. It'll be the greatest rigged election in history. It'll be the greatest fraud ever perpetrated. Get rid of the ballots. Get rid of the ballots. Get rid of the ballots. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Join me every Sunday afternoon. Hello and welcome to The Left Speaks. My name is Chris. As always, we are live and unscripted. Today is November the 15th, Sunday. Phone lines are open, 855-915-5338, 855-915-LEFT. You are more than welcome to call in whether you agree or disagree. Your call will go on the air live and unscripted, the same as me. Uh, if you bring evidence, I will screen it first, obviously, to make sure that it's no neo-Nazi propaganda or something that violates Facebook's terms of service or YouTube's terms of service. But other than that, we will put it on the air and display it for everybody. This is going to be a relatively short episode unless we have some callers call in with some new evidence. There has been nothing displayed that shows up as evidence. There's been more claims. We'll address some of those. There's been more Trump saying the election was rigged. There's been more Republicans that have come out and said, well, you know, we'll back President Trump. But there's been no documented cases of systemic nationwide, because that's what we're talking about here, plots or plans to steal the election from President Trump. Nothing. In fact, it all lines up with the polling data that we took beforehand. If anything, it's closer for Trump losing than it was than the polling indicated prior to the actual votes taking place. As we saw in the introductory video, we knew well beforehand that the mail-in vote was going to be primarily Democrat. That makes sense. Democrats, whether you agree or disagree with the hoax being, or with the, uh, with the coronavirus being a hoax, Democrats don't think it is. Democrats tend to take it more seriously. Democrats are accepting the CDC's numbers. It's Trump supporters and conservatives and Trump himself who contests all of these things. So when we poll prior to the election and we see that over 60% of Democrats are going to vote by mail compared to in the 30% range for Trump supporters, and when Donald Trump himself tells his supporters to vote in person, it's not some big shock 
that the mail-in votes are primarily Democrat. This is simple common sense. This is what Donald Trump asked for. He asked for his supporters to vote in person. And it looks like quite a few of them did. But again, prior to the election, prior to election night, we knew this was the case. And it's funny. In the states that calculate or count, rather, mail-in votes first, like I believe Ohio, Joe Biden jumped out to an early lead. In the, vote, in the states that count mail-in ballots at the end, after everything is done, Trump looked to have a lead, and then you started counting the rest of the ballots. The ones that we knew going in were going to be predominantly Democrat. Guys, this isn't hard. I've been asking all my conservative friends, I've been all over conservative media for this evidence, actual evidence, not more claims, actual evidence of voter fraud. And the stuff I found, which we'll dive into shortly here in a minute, is Four dead people voted in Georgia. Okay, well, no dead people should vote, but when they investigate it, within a day, they find out that two of them are actually alive. If two dead people did vote, let's find out how it happened and prosecute those people to the fullest extent of the law. But that falls in line with the historical rate of voter fraud of 0.00009%, and that's the high number. Two votes isn't going to switch or swing Georgia back to red, guys. And claiming fraud when you have no proof of fraud is undermining American democracy. Conservatives tell me all the time, and I said when I was a conservative that I love this country. Well, part of loving this country is actually supporting the Constitution and supporting the fact that we are a democracy and people get to vote. And in a democracy, you don't always get your way. Now, to try and make this simpler... If your kid was in high school or middle school or doesn't really matter, university, and came back at the end of the semester with their grades, and they failed half their classes, You might say, what happened? We were expecting you to get all A's or all B's and pass all of your classes. You've been telling us for months that you were going to pass all of your classes. But when I look at the report card, it says you got a D here, you got an F here. These aren't passing grades. What happened? And if your kid came to you and said, it was teacher fraud and that big education rigged the system against them and made them fail half of their classes that they needed to pass. But that really they had more correct answers and they were going to pass by a lot. I love my son, but I'm not going to take his word on that. You know, I might ask to see some of the tests that were graded 
where he claims that he got the right answer, he had enough correct answers to pass. That's what we're dealing with here, guys. We got a guy that's saying he was going to win the election for years. And he failed to do so. So now he wants to claim that the system was rigged against him. That it's all fake. That the reality is that he won. Even though we're looking at the report card saying he failed in this state, he failed in this state, he failed in this state to win. And it doesn't matter how many times my son or President Trump jumps up and says it was rigged, it's fake, it's a conspiracy. What you're looking at on my report card or my election results isn't real. There was fraud. They need to prove that case. In both instances, they need to show me that the system was rigged. In both instances, they need to show me that there was fraud. It's not my fault. Well, it is in President Trump's case because I voted against him in a swing state by mail, by absentee ballot. And it doesn't matter how many times he jumps up and screams that it's fake news and fraud and rigged. My vote counts. And if your son or your daughter came to you with that report card showing that they were failing in half the states, ooh, I mean classes, that they didn't get a passing grade in half the states, classes, are you just going to believe them straight away? Or are you going to think they're bullshitting you? And even if you give them the benefit of the doubt because it's your son or it's your daughter, are you marching down to the school and setting up a protest? Are you gathering all the other parents of students who failed those classes and standing out in front of the school with your picket signs? saying that big education is rigged without seeing any evidence whatsoever that it was? Or do you want to see the proof first from your child that these classes were actually rigged before you make a fool out of yourself? Because that's what you're doing. You've got a charlatan and a con man up there because he's not providing you any proof saying that the whole election system, all of American democracy, because we're talking about all 50 states here, was rigged. Curiously, only in the battleground states that voted against him that he really needed to win. All of the polling data beforehand told us this, guys. This isn't out of the blue. To go back to your kid analogy in high school, you've been getting notes from the teacher and from the school board and from the PTA telling you for months that it didn't look like your child was going to pass these classes. You've had different teachers asking you, what can we do? What can your kid do to get a better grade in these classes because he's not doing good enough? It was all over the news. President Trump's trailing in this state. President Trump's trailing in that state. President Trump is failing this class, this state. This isn't some shock. And now, 
after months and months of letters saying that your kid is failing this class, that your president is failing this state, your kid, your president, is saying it was fraud and not offering any evidence, not offering any proof. Somebody saying something doesn't make it true. I'm going to repeat that for those in the back of the class. Somebody saying something doesn't make it true. I could go on air today and say that it was aliens, the ones from outer space that used mind control devices to convince all these Trump supporters that normally vote Republican to vote against him and vote for the Democrat Joe Biden. I said it. How else do you explain President Trump losing? We'll ignore the fact that there is a global pandemic and that the economy is in a serious mess because we've ignored it for months at this point. We'll ignore all the human rights violations. We'll pretend that nobody dislikes President Trump. We'll, we'll ignore all the polling data beforehand that told us for months that a majority of the country was going to vote against him. It was the space aliens. They rigged the election. I've got just as much proof for space aliens rigging the election as Trump's provided for Democrats rigging the election. Why do you believe him and not me? I said it. Do I need to tweet it so that it's true? Like I said before, guys, this isn't going to be a relatively long show. Because I don't know how many times I can get up here and ask for evidence. I don't know how many times I can get up here when I ask for evidence and be given an interview from somebody who says there was voter fraud. Somebody saying something doesn't make it true. We got a question from chat. What would actually be considered proof for voter fraud? Well, you have poll watchers in every state that are watching the ballots go through, watching the process. In Pennsylvania, there was a court case that Republicans have spun into. They couldn't see anything where they were 12 feet away. Republicans and Democrats were even here. And then the day of the election, it went to court and the Pennsylvania uh, state Supreme court, I believe it was said, you got to let them within six feet. But if we had video, uh, okay, here's a perfect example. The project Veritas guy interview that I did last week where he was a United States postal service employee and said, Hey, you know, we were told to backdate all these ballots. You could have that on audio recording you know, of his boss telling him to do this. That's not that hard to arrange. Everybody's got one of these nowadays. They can record. Hey, Chris, I want you to commit a, a election fraud and backdate all these ballots. Okay, boss. Let me walk off. Turn this on. You know, to where it records, walk back to my boss. Hey, boss, I'm not quite sure I understood what was going on. So you want me to take all the ballots that come in after election day and stamp them for election day? Is that what we're doing? Or are we doing just the ones for the fourth? Or are we doing the fifth? Or are we doing sixth, seventh, eighth? Like, where's the cutoff? Oh, well, we want you to backdate all of them. I've got it recorded now. That's evidence. I don't know. I could have videotaped showing people 
videotape. That's how you can tell I'm getting old, right? I could have used the camera on my phone to record people backdating ballots. There's a lot of things that could count potentially as evidence. What doesn't count as evidence is one dude or one lady saying, oh, yeah, there's voter fraud. I know there was. I've gotten the response in previous conversations that the main reason that this would be voter fraud is because mail-in ballots were illegal. They need to prove that case. Ballots from World War II and whatnot were absentee ballots. Apparently, that's not the same thing, but I really don't see the difference. They need to prove that it's not the same thing. Trump voted absentee, and mail-in ballots are legal. The Constitution leaves it to the states how to run their elections. Mail-in ballots have been used in Oregon for, I believe, it's 20 years now. Well, Oregon's a blue state. Well, they've also been used primarily in Utah, the solid red state conservative state of Utah for over 10 years at this point. This isn't some new thing. Trump voted absentee mail-in ballot in Florida instead of where he actually resides in the White House. He used his Mar-a-Lago address. And if I recall correctly, which I would have to look up because I don't have it on hand at this point, he was specifically told not to do that by a court, but I can't remember which one. So take that one with a grain of salt. The ballots in World War II were absentee mail-in. It's an interchangeable term. Some states have expanded to where they send mail-in ballots to basically everybody and you have your choice. You can choose to vote absentee or you can choose to show up to the polls in person. Some states require you to basically prove a hardship in order to vote absentee, but not all states do that. And since the Constitution leaves it to the states in, uh, in determining how they want to run their elections, the Constitution basically spells out when they have to run their elections by. It's perfectly legal. It's just another red herring. Some way to vote out or to throw out the 65%, 66%, whatever the graphic was, over 60% of votes, of ballots that we knew were going to be primarily Democrat. It's the same thing you're seeing with the electoral maps right now because there's a lot of different ones out there. But I'm going to show you just a couple. This is the projected map from Fox News. You know, liberal rag Fox News. As you can see, they've projected the winner in all the states at this point. The ones with multiple colors like Nebraska and Maine split their electoral votes based on how their population votes. So it's not winner take all. Maine, for example, is worth four electoral votes. I believe Trump got one of them. The other three went to Biden. It was basically a 75-25% split. Okay, Nebraska does the same thing. They have five. Biden got, I believe, one of them. The rest of the states are winner take all. Obviously, this is not official, but states have started certifying their results. These are projections, which are on the websites saying based off the votes that have been tabulated in the state so far and the remaining votes to be tabulated, this is what we're expecting to happen. Again, this is from Fox News, which a lot of Republicans are claiming to have a problem with now because it's not backing the story that Trump won. It's a news agency, guys. It's not supposed to back your agenda. You're saying the quiet part out loud. It's supposed to present the facts. You know, unbiased, unvarnished, just this is what it is. This is what Fox News is attempting to do in this case. Okay. As you can see, you need 270 electoral votes to win. Biden is projected to have 306. 
Trump has 232 projected. Now, a lot of conservatives, not speaking to all of them, or not speaking for all of them, I should say, have a problem with this map because it shows their guy losing. So capitalism being capitalism, of course, there's another company, multiple companies, but I only picked one for sake of illustration, that's going to jump out and try to find a way to spin this so that the people who don't like this map will click on their map and they can get more advertising revenue from those people clicking on their map. They don't give a damn that they're hurting and undermining American democracy or faith in the American democratic process. They want that sweet, sweet money. So from the conservative rag, the Epic times or epoch. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I'm going to go with Epic. This is the map they're showing. They're claiming Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia are all contested results because Trump has filed lawsuits in those states. So to make this consistent, if Kanye West decided to file lawsuits in all of these states, we'd have to gray out the whole thing. And the score would be zero. A lawsuit isn't evidence, guys. Somebody saying something doesn't make it true. These people are just hustling you. Hell, they can file a lawsuit in these states, claim it's on behalf of voters for America or whatever, and then gray out the block. That doesn't make it real, guys. You want to know the difference between the two maps? Fox is looking at the votes that have actually been counted and the remaining ones left. This conservative news, and I use that term very, very loosely, source, is just saying, hey, we're just not going to report the states that would show that Biden's going to win. That way all the people that are upset about that will come to us. Doesn't the Associated Press counter this? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, there are multiple election maps you can get your news from. That's why the way in which that election map is calculated matters. And just graying out states that happen to have a lawsuit in them isn't showing any results. It's just a way to keep the race in limbo longer. Because anybody can file a lawsuit about anything. You know all those frivolous lawsuits that conservatives and Democrats are like or supposedly so against? It's what these are without evidence, guys. It's why they keep getting dismissed. Let's go through a rundown of the lawsuits. Just a few of them. We've got Mr. Trump showing nothing like systemic fraud. We've got 16 lawsuits and counting. And they've been filing since election day. Here's a rundown of the cases and their statuses. Filed in Michigan on November 9th. The plaintiffs misunderstood the process for verifying and tabulating absentee votes. 
on Friday, the chief judge denied the petition from the pro Trump side plaintiffs interpretations of events is incorrect and not credible. Filed November the 11th, federal suit repeats the claim of fraud and misconduct from the previous case. Still seeking to block Michigan certifying the vote. Plaintiffs submitted more than 230 pages of affidavits from Republican poll challengers, but they described isolated grievances and perceived irregularities, not systemic fraud. So again, it's another case of more people saying something. This one cracked me up, though. One of the instances of what the Republicans are trying to represent in their lawsuit as systemic fraud, the third person said a Democratic poll worker told her to go back to the suburbs, Karen. That's not fraud. Come on, guys. A fourth found it suspicious that most of the few dozen ballots he saw counted were cast by members of the military were votes for Mr. Biden. I'm a former member of the military. I voted for Mr. Biden. I'm sorry that this fourth person's brain can't comprehend that I value the oath that I took to protect and defend the Constitution and to protect American lives more than I value his loyalty to President Trump. And before somebody spins this out of context, I didn't vote in Michigan. I voted in Nevada, but I voted absentee. So if this Yahoo had been in Nevada, I mean, guys, this isn't evidence of fraud. The status on this one is pending. I'm betting it's going to end up the same as the one before it. During the ballot counting in Michigan, the Trump campaign sued to stop it. One poll watcher said that another, whom she didn't name, how convenient, told her that she was told by still other poll workers to change the date on a ballot which was received. So I've got this one person who says that this other person that they can't name was told by other people. What is this, a game of telephone? So one person was told by another person that they can't give the name to who was told by some other people to change the date on a ballot. So for starters, a ballot didn't decide Michigan. It was quite a few more votes than a ballot. Number two, one person saying that another person that they can't name was told by other people that they can't name to do something isn't evidence of anything. Just because a person says that another person said that some other people said a thing doesn't make it true. This is an evidence, guys. Judge Stevens of the Michigan Court of Claims characterized the affidavit as, I heard someone else say something and said, Tell me how this is not hearsay. Come on now and dismiss the case. A Repub Another case, 
a Republican poll challenger, an election an integrity fund, a nonprofit organization sued to stop election workers in Detroit from him duplicating ballots that could not be read by a machine. This was an early effort to suggest that mail-in ballots were being handled to benefit Mr. Biden. Judge Kinney dismissed the suit on November 6th. Plaintiffs failed to identify the occurrence and scope of any alleged violation. In other words, just because they say it doesn't make it true. Just because you tell your kids that they'll get presents from Santa Claus on Christmas if they're good doesn't make it true. These are multiple different judges. Hard to claim bias. Guys, that's why these lawsuits are getting thrown out left, right, and center. There's no evidence. And every time you ask, oh, there's some coming. Oh, there's some coming. It, it's coming. Just, just you wait. 12 days later, almost two weeks, still nothing, but just you wait, it'll be in the lawsuit. Not in one of the ones that get thrown out for lack of evidence. Apparently, but just you wait. If you're really good all year, Santa's going to bring some more votes for Trump. In Pennsylvania, and I'm not running through all of these. I'm sorry. I just, uh, I'm picking the top four or five in a list. November 10th, on behalf of a voter, the Trump campaign appealed the decision by the Philadelphia County Board of Electors to count five categories of mail-in ballots. The number of ballots challenged in this suit, 8,349 for minor errors would not be enough to change the election result. So even if you win, it's irrelevant. On Friday, Judge James Crumlish, that's a guess, sorry if I mispronounced your name, Your Honor, denied all the challenges to all five categories of ballots. The lawsuit challenges that the ballots with outer envelopes that were signed but lacked other information like the date or the voter's printed name or street address. They wanted to throw it out. They wanted to throw out your vote if you lived in the state of Pennsylvania. Something that was postmarked with a date, not because you forgot to date the ballot, but because you forgot to date the envelope. That's not fraud, guys. I mean, if you just want to throw out votes that disagree with you, then let's just say that. But somebody forgetting to date the outside envelope of an envelope that's going to be dated by the post office is not fraud. It's nowhere close to fraud. You know it and I know it. And I might think President Trump's an idiot, but I'm pretty sure he knows it too. This isn't about fraud. It's never been about fraud. The problem with the election is the ballots. Get rid of the ballots, and there won't be a transition, frankly. That's almost a direct quote from President Trump. That's what this is about, guys. 
And if you just want to get rid of votes that disagree with you, then just say it. Because then I can at least say, you're not American, you don't love this country, and you don't support democracy. You just want your way. Let's go look at some of the more recent claims of election fraud from President Trump. What are they trying to hide? They know, and so does everybody else. Expose the crime. This was tweeted out by, unfortunately, until the inauguration, the current president of the United States. Who is trying to hide what? Nobody else knows what in the hell you're talking about because you didn't say it. What crime? Even your lawsuits aren't showing any crimes. That's why they're getting tossed. Saying a thing doesn't make it true. He, Joe Biden, won because the election was rigged. No vote watchers or observers allowed. Vote tabulated by radical left, privately owned company Dominion, with a bad reputation and bum equipment that couldn't even qualify for Texas, which I won by a lot, the fake and silent media, and more. Vote watchers were allowed. They were allowed before your lawsuit in the state of Pennsylvania, within 12 feet, and then you sued on election day, and both of them were allowed within 6 feet. And I'm talking all poll watchers, not just Republican ones. Democrats were 12 feet away and Republicans were 12 feet away. The Republicans said, this is too far in court. So then they were all allowed within six feet. So they were there. I also think it's hilarious that Radical left, privately owned company. The radical left isn't in favor of privately owned companies. You know, that socialism, terrorism, or socialism, communism thing you guys are so scared of that you think anybody who votes for Biden is in favor of? Remember that. This doesn't even make sense even if you drink his Kool-Aid. If you believe what he's telling you, that Joe Biden is a socialist communist guy who's going to like destroy the entire country and economy, why would a privately owned company, you know, something that would be destroyed under that socialism, communism thing you guys are so scared of, Support their own destruction. Come on, guys. I mean, I'm really, really, really trying to take this seriously and, and, and think the way you're thinking. But it doesn't make sense even if you try to think that way. The media is reporting all over this. They're reporting that your lawsuits are dismissed left, right, center. They're reporting that you're refusing to concede the election. They're reporting constantly that you're providing no evidence. So they're not fake and they're not silent. They're just not saying what you want to hear. Those aren't the same things, buddy.
if you want to hear the sky is green and I walk outside and say, sky looks blue. That's not me being fake or silent. But let's look into this dominion thing. He's not going to provide any evidence. He hasn't provided evidence of anything. This is just another claim, guys. Just because somebody says something doesn't make it true. So since he won't provide any evidence, I'll take a peek and see what we can figure out on this. CISA.gov, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, an official website of the United States government, part of the Department of Homeland Security, published on November 12th, 2020. There is no evidence that any voting system which is what he was referring to when he was talking about Dominion. They make voting systems. There is no evidence that any voting system deleted or lost votes, changed votes, or was in any way compromised. From the Department of Homeland Security. Am I supposed to believe they're in on it too? So let me get this straight. Multiple judges in multiple states, Republican appointees and Democrat appointees, the Department of Homeland Security, and all of the news media are in on this. They're all in on this conspiracy to rig elections with voting machines in a couple of states. Like I said, guys, it's going to be a short show. Saying a thing does not make it true. This is why evidence matters. If I say I saw my neighbor murder somebody, the police might show up but they're not going to throw them in jail just because I said so. They look for this nifty little thing called evidence. Guys, we're almost two weeks after the election. No evidence produced. None. This was sent to me. It's a nifty little scroll showing that you can go do a Google search for open data, Pennsylvania ballot request. It zooms out. And then when you zoom in on the dates of birth, you got a whole bunch of them there that are January 1st, 1800. This was sent to me by a close friend of mine from a few years ago. That's a staunch Trump supporter and conservative, former military like myself, has often wondered how I ended up so far left compared to him. 
very good man. Loves this country just like I do. When I asked for proof, this is what was sent to me. Now, okay, in good faith, like I said, this is a close conservative friend of mine. I'm going to look into this. So open data, Pennsylvania ballot request. Going to walk you through exactly what I did. Open data, Pennsylvania ballot request. Google search, just like he did. Okay, there's multiple returns. It doesn't show me which one he clicked, but the second one says unofficial, so I'm going to go with the official one. We'll click on that. It takes it a minute to load because it's quite a bit of information. Oh, look, January 1st, 1800. What's this little eye with the description? Let's click on more. This is the voter's date of birth. The reason some birth dates will display as 1-1-1800 is due to confidentiality reasons of the registered votes. Usually, this is for victims of domestic violence. So a wife who's been battered by her husband, but still wants to vote after she leaves him without him being able to find her. Pennsylvania apparently has a rule that you can list your date of birth as 1-1-1800. And if we go back and watch the video... Watch real close. They see the same thing. They just zoom way out on it so that you can't tell what it is. See right here. It's right there. It was there for just a, a, a brief second. I don't know. It seems to me. Like people should be able to vote in safety without having to worry about a abusive ex-husband chasing them down. Call me crazy. And it's right there. The description of why that is there, why there are dates of birth in the 1800s. It's right there on Pennsylvania's website. The minute you click on it to sort it, it tells you, as full disclosure, hey, there's some stuff that's going to look weird here, but there's a very good reason for it, and it's been there. I didn't add it in. The state of Pennsylvania didn't add in that disclaimer because somebody started sending that video around because it's in the video. Come on, guys. Quit just believing things that agree with what you already want to believe. I want to believe Santa's real. Just because I see a overweight guy dressed in a red suit in the mall doesn't make it real. Right now, there's better evidence for Santa Claus than there is for voter fraud in this country. Voter fraud of the level that's going to override a presidential election. So we'll jump to another one. 
Did y'all hear about Sharpie Gate? That apparently a video went viral of a woman claiming she witnessed poll workers deliberately handing out Sharpies at poll locations to invalidate votes. The Secretary of State threw out my vote for Trump because I voted with a Sharpie. I was handed a Sharpie and told to use it to fill out the ballot. So to buy this one, I have to believe that at the polling location in Arizona, if I'm handing out pens and I'm handing out Sharpies, I know who's going to be a Trump voter just based off looking at them. So I know who to give a Sharpie to, but it gets better. So let's look into this. Elections department's officials across Arizona have confirmed that the claim is unfounded and processes are in place to ensure ballots are counted regardless of what kind of writing implement is used to fill them out. The Maricopa County Elections Department says voters are able to use blue or black ink or Sharpies to fill out ballots. The county's new tabulation machines, which were tested many times, will count votes cast with these type of pens. So even if I handed you a Sharpie instead of a pen, because I somehow via telepathy knew you were going to vote for Trump in the state of Arizona, your vote's still going to count. So I wasted all that telepathy mind energy on something that was ultimately pointless because your vote still counted. As somebody in the chat said, where's the body? If I'm going to claim there's a murder, you got to, you got to produce a body or you got to produce evidence that there is a body, you know, substantial blood loss, gunpowder residue, multiple reports from multiple different people of gunshots going off, bullet holes in the wall. And just somebody saying, hey, I heard some gunshots. Isn't getting anybody convicted of murder, guys. Saying a thing doesn't make it true. The conservatives I know that are conservatives still, that are my friends, that I respect, and that I have honest debate back and forth with, they aren't buying this garbage. There's no evidence to support this, guys. Trump is claiming that there was a multiple statewide conspiracy theory at Tons of polling locations. To steal a nationwide election from him. With zero evidence. None. In fact, it flies in the face of all the evidence we're seeing both after the election and before the election. If anything, the election was even closer than the polling before the election would have led us to believe. Meaning Trump did better than what we expected. 
but all the evidence beforehand. Biden's going to win. Again, from multiple different sources. Go look it up for yourself. Go look up the actual polls. All of the evidence before the election. All the mail-in ballots when they're counted are going to be predominantly Democrat. Over a 60% margin. We knew this going in. And then you're acting shocked. That what we knew going in is what happened. I'm not sorry you lost because I voted against you, but I am sorry you're experiencing a loss. Anybody who's ever played anything, whether it's a video game or a sports game or taking a job interview or gone to school, knows what it's like to lose. And it sucks. But it's reality and it happens sometimes. And in a democracy, you don't always get your way. Other people can agree or disagree with you. But jumping up and claiming election fraud when you have absolutely zero evidence is undermining the democratic process in this country. From the chat, regardless of the outcome, we're all going to have to continue getting up each day, working and being law-abiding citizens. Win or lose, regulation time has expired. I agree. And I especially agree with the law-abiding part. We're going to take a short break now that we're a little bit past the hour. We'll come back for a few minutes after that. Thank you so much. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. So this is not something new. This is not some new concern. We're going to watch a couple introductory videos that I did on previous episodes recently. First one's going to cover mail-in voter fraud and Trump first raising this issue. The time for silence is over. Get rid of the ballots. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. The president has repeatedly said that voting by mail is particularly vulnerable to fraud. And the ballots are out of control. We're going to lose this election as if the election is rigged. Remember that. Remember that. Get rid of the ballots. Remember that. Get rid of the ballots. Remember that. Get rid of the ballots. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. Get rid of the ballots, get rid of the ballots, get rid of the ballots. Do you commit to making sure that there's a peaceful transfer? We want to have get rid of the ballots and you'll have a very transfer, we'll have a very peaceful, there won't be a transfer, frankly, there'll be a continuation. You'll never know who the winner is, but the winner's going to be me. It'll be the greatest rigged election in history. It'll be the greatest fraud ever perpetrated. Get rid of the ballots. Get rid of the ballots. Get rid of the ballots. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. And remember Trump's problem with violence in politics and being unable to condemn white supremacists and neo-fascist movements? Stand back and stand by? The time for silence is over. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups. I came here to speak on behalf of Donald Trump. Do it, sir. Say I'm... it. Do it. Say it. You want to call them, what do you want to call them? Very fine people on both sides. And for the white Christian people of this nation. Um, give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and white like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists boys. and right Proud militia. boys, stand back and stand by. Fourth degree, you get arrested or in a serious violent fight for the really? cops. Really? Yes. I'm taking the low road. I'm punching them in the face. So that. I uh, attacked a couple guys. Uh... Very fine people on both sides. So I punched him in the face and I ripped his mask off and then I punched him again. President Trump retweeted a video showing a supporter making a racist statement. White power! Very fine people on both sides.
are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists? There's not. Do it, sir. Say it. Do it. Say it. Very fine people on both sides. All that ridiculously racist footage, that was from the 2016 Unite the Right rally where Trump said there were very fine people on both sides. It was a rally to remove a Confederate statue that Richard Spencer, neo-Nazi Richard Spencer, and several other alt-right members decided to protest against. And as I said in that episode... If I show up to any protest and I'm on the same side as the Nazis, literal Nazis, chanting blood and soil and Jews will not replace us, as they did at that rally on that location, I'm not staying. I'm certainly not calling them very fine people. And if you want to make the argument that Trump wasn't referring to those people, that's fine. I want to know what very fine people are standing next to neo-Nazis and protesting anything. And remember the Proud Boys stand back and stand by comment from the first presidential debate? You thought it was going to be irrelevant? Well, let's see where we are at today. November 14th, 2020. We've got Trump supporters and counter protesters clashing at a DC rally. Who's there? Members of the Proud Boys designated a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center were seen out on the streets of Washington. Now, I'm not saying all of them, all the protesters, all of the people that were at that protest were Proud Boys. They're not neo-Nazis. But telling groups that are designated as hate groups to stand back and stand by after an election is a problem. Now, this is all conjecture, but there's some concerning stuff going on. The Secretary of Defense, the same one during the Black Lives Matter protest, that broke with President Trump and said he didn't support deploying military troops on U.S. soil to dominate the streets as President Trump wanted? Yeah, Trump just fired him after the election. Effective immediately. November the 9th. November the 12th. The Deputy Chief of Staff to the Secretary of Defense has resigned. The latest official to depart the Pentagon. All of this post the election. Senior defense officials are being removed. Loyalists are being installed. Then we've got U.S. Secretary of State. Oh, we got to go through an ad. There we go. The E People's Choice Awards are coming November 15th. Try that again. Apologize. It's live TV. What can you do? It will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. All right. We're, we're- After the election while we're also clearing out all these senior Department of Defense officials that disagree with us. 
Hey creators, if you're using elevator things, unless of course. You see, we are unique among armies. We are unique among militaries. We do not take an oath to a king or a queen, a tyrant or a dictator. We do not take an oath to an individual. No, we do not take an oath to a country, a tribe, or a religion. We take an oath to the Constitution. And every soldier that is represented in this museum, every sailor, airman, marine, coast guardsman, each of us will protect and defend that document regardless of personal price. You see, we are unique among armies. We are unique among militaries. Spoken by United States Army General post-election. As the purge of the civilians in charge of the military is taking place. Now, I'm not saying Trump's doing a coup. But if you were looking at a foreign country, say the president of Iraq claimed election fraud with zero evidence and then started firing all the military people who disagreed with him about deploying troops on U.S. or on Iraqi soil, be cause for concern and then say some of his generals in that same time frame started publicly stating we don't swear an oath to you any individual I would think they might be looking at the same concerns I am and say that this Iraqi president had a history of being unable to condemn hate groups and groups that advocate for violence and politics to get their way. We wouldn't think very much of that country's democracy. Guys, right now in a democracy, we have a right to agree to disagree. And we all get to go to the polls and we all get to voice our opinions. And if you want to take that away or if you want to question that, you're going to need a lot more evidence than somebody just getting up there and saying it. Getting up there and saying that democracy and that ballots and that elections are invalid. Because right now, he disagrees with me on a lot of things. But he might not always agree with you either. Democracy, elections, your vote counting, my vote counting, those are all more important than any personal loyalty you feel to one man. And anybody in the military, when they take that oath, they learn it right then and there. One man, whatever your feelings about him, You cannot allow one man to undermine your belief in America. You cannot allow one man with zero evidence, with zero documentation, to undermine your faith in democracy. 
just because you're mad that he didn't win. I'll look at any evidence that's provided. As you've seen, I research it. I read it. I look at Fox News. I look at the Epic Times. I look at things sent through my channel and personally through Facebook. I have discussions back and forth with both sides. The phone lines are always open. They're always toll free. This isn't a case of me ignoring what conservative Trump supporters are saying. This is a case of me saying, you sound like you just want to believe this. Your claims have no evidence that you're giving me. You sound like you just want me to take your word because you're taking Trump's word. And if you want me to take your word that I should disregard democratic elections in America, the founder of modern democracy, I can't do that. I swore an oath to uphold and defend this Constitution. And if you're going to tell me that the elections in this country are invalid, you're going to need a lot of proof for me to buy that. I'm not doing it off the say-so of a loser. Off the say-so of somebody who's mad that he didn't win the election. Feel free to message in with any evidence you want me to look over. I'll put it on air. Feel free to call in with any evidence you want to go over. I'll put it on air. Feel free to link me. Post on the Facebook or the YouTube channel any evidence you want me to go over. But if the only evidence you can provide isn't greater than the evidence for alien abductions in this country, then I'm not going to believe you because I don't believe people are getting abducted by aliens either. I will believe that you believe that. But if the only evidence you've got is some guy in an interview saying, oh yeah, there's a whole lot of election fraud. I can find an interview of some guy saying, oh yeah, last night I was abducted by aliens. My standards are the same. I want to know why yours are not. Thank you everybody for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.